Okay, this is the uh, keypad repair kit for the Fisher Fish Stick Plow Controller uh, version 9400. Uh, they made two versions of this. Um, they both have the four buttons and a power button. However, uh, the older one, I, uh, I call it version 1, has the power and float LED over here. And the newer version, version 2, has the float and on off up there. And the button configurations are slightly different, so we have two versions of the membrane keypad repair. Now this will replace the conductive pads in the switch, and it also seals out oil and dirt for the future. So this will last longer than the original. I'm not going to go through taking it apart because it's so simple. It's just two screws. You pull this apart, and this comes out. It's plugged into a harness, but that comes out easily right there. And then uh, the old version, there's four rubber little tabs that go into holes, and they you can just pull it out. It's in there. You just pull it out like that. This already has the membrane installed, um, and this one has five. It has one in the middle, and then one in each corner. And you just pull it out gently like that, and. Uh, to install it, just make sure you have the right one. You know, you can kind of line it up and go, yeah, it fits. There's the LED holes and everything. And then you just peel off the brown layer. You need to clean this really good first using rubbing alcohol. I like 90% uh, better. Um, and clean it up really good. And then you don't want it sticky or anything left, any dirt or oils left on there. It should be nice and smooth feeling. So then you peel the brown layer off. And you just kind of use those four outside holes and, uh, you know, the cutouts around the LEDs to kind of line it up. It doesn't have to be ultra perfect, but you want the, um, the holes all clear for those rubber tabs to go back down through. So you just peel it off and kind of line it up. If you don't get it perfectly right, you can peel it off and put it back down again. Try not to bend this. We want it as flat as possible. When you install it, if it's cupped in, it could um, permanently hold down one of these buttons. It'd be like something's holding the button down if it's warped in like that. And this other version has a bunch of LEDs around the edge and top and bottom, and then two right there, and it's got two cutouts for those two LEDs. So it's a little easier to line up because you basically just, you know, again, make sure it's nice and clean with rubbing alcohol, a rag, Q-tip, and then you just peel off the brown layer and then put it over those two LEDs, the holes, and everything should line up. And that's it. As long as it's cleaned well and laid down flat, it should work. Um, to put it back together, you just line up the rubber pins. And you might want to use a small pair of like needle nose pliers. Just give it a little bit of a tug. You don't want to pull too hard. We're just pulling the rubber back down. Um, and then, of course, you'd put it back in the handle. This one's a little bit harder because it's got five. And the middle one has a little nub on it that kind of sticks in when it gets in there. And um, I also wanted to point out, show you that this one was really worn out. The, the um, rubber is ripped here um, and stuff so I'm not sure how long this is going to last however uh, without the button installed this is really useless because this button gets stuck down um, and shorts itself out however with the membrane repair pad okay so I, want, I got two of those pins in and now the, that middle one I want to do next kind of tug it up and then, it, then I can put those last two in one at a time. But it's a nice feature. The membrane keypad is its own button. So this button like kind of sticks down. It's like not popping back up. But it still works because uh, it doesn't have enough strength on its own to hold down the membrane. So even when it's stuck down like that and then this one's ripped, it's still holding on working and this one's stuck down but if I push it like that it works just like before it just doesn't pop back up so that's it 
you put it back together. Um, you know, you I test it. You hook this up to 12 volts. You should be able to turn this on and off and push these buttons um, and get little little relays click. And you can see if it works just to make sure before you put it back in the truck. And uh, that's it. Thanks for watching.